good week, good task here ahead of us. Um, I think they're doing a good job down there. I've always been a tremendous, respectful fan of Tom Coughlin. You know, and I, I irritated him when I uh, uh, turned down or was dropped out of a scheduled interview when I was supposed to go with him when he went and started the Giants. And uh, then I chose and went to the Redskins at that same time. And uh, he and I laugh about that now. You know, he, he wasn't, you know, as you, if anybody knows Coach Coughlin, he was a little bit irritated. But uh, I think he's done a very good job down there. Doug Marone, too. You know, he has his past in Buffalo, like I do. And he's done it. he did a really good job there and also at Syracuse. I think he understands the weather conditions that will play in this weekend. I'm not for sure all their players will, but uh, that'll be a fun thing. And I kind of look forward to those things. You know, one of my favorite games ever that I had a chance to uh, coach in this league. First off, the coldest game in my coaching career was here in 1999 when Cleveland Browns came back, last game of the year, 19 below, 30 below wind chill. It was a little chilly, okay? And we won 24 nothing, but it was still chilly. And the second one was up there at Buffalo. I think it was in year two, we were playing the Dolphins and Dave Wonstadt was the head coach of the Dolphins. And uh, it was beautiful sunshine the first quarter and the clouds rolled off of Lake Erie. On the second quarter on, it snowed 22 inches on the final three quarters, and you couldn't even see the other team on the field. And uh, we had to bring everybody out of the box, and that was a slug fest. And I hope it's that way this week. And I hope it uh, rises up, and let's make it into a slug fest. Questions? Wow, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> what effect have those uh, Tishon Gibson uh, quotes had on your None, you know, and you know, you guys have been around me. You think that uh, we don't talk, you know, we don't how we practice, and that nothing is zero. And you know, inside the white lines, inside the game, we play, and nothing. And you, you know, as competitors at all walks of levels and sports, that's everywhere. You know, and that if you're afraid of that, get out. You know, this is, this is no big deal. You, uh, last Sunday, a couple opportunities with the lead, you know, especially in the second half. Can you just talk about what happened? And what yeah, happened? yeah, one of those things is, is that, I, and I think, I don't know, again, if you've talked to the guys or not, you know, but uh, how fragile and how close the game is or how fragile the technique is, is for – to be just a little bit off. And, you know, if it's an earned play, when I say earned, I'm talking about a close, tight, athletic, overly athletic play, we get on. But when it's not, you know, and we had a couple, of, really, really two of them. The last one uh, was 10 guys got it, one guy didn't. And that's unfortunate, you know. and. What a great kid he is! What a great young man he is! And would love to have that play back, but we got to suffer through that. And then, um, you know, the another one with the, uh, the tight end down the boundary. You know, Jabril's got to do a better job of that, and I got to do a better job of that, making sure, you know, over the top coverage and that kind of stuff. But he, uh, one of the things is I, you know, as they all get back into it, it's been fun to see how much fun. Jabril has playing the game and how much even now getting back into it last week and then this week of practice. And it's also very respectful and fun to see how prepared he is, okay? Those are gonna happen. A couple of things like that's gonna happen, but okay, we've gotta eliminate those things because we play so hard in other ways. We had a couple of runs in that ball game too that was uncharacteristic of us because you know, a couple of times it's because, you know, we were trying to affect the quarterback and, you know, wanting to affect the quarterback uh, better in uh, pass rush. And so, you know, we didn't set the edge a couple of times the way I think we're the best team in the National Football League on setting the edge and setting force. I don't think we had a couple. And that's getting back into it. You know, young Miles, 
you know, and he, if you could see how he's practiced this week too, hopefully it'll transfer into the game. Um, but there's nobody from me, you know, here, here's the other thing too, so you all know. The biggest gift that I give anybody I get to coach, anybody I get to work with, I didn't say they work for me, I get to work with me on the staff, is that blame me. Blame me. Buck stops here. I am okay with that. Now, you and anybody else that make repeated mistakes, you might get uncomfortable when I start to explore why those mistakes continue to be made. And that's what I'm here for. And we've made a lot of progress. I've just got to eliminate some of the score plays. Can you talk about losing Jamie, losing Jamie Collins? What a great person. And, uh, but, you know, we've had some things this, this year already. You know, I think about him more than even the production development on defense. Uh, you know, that, that bothers me more. You know, and again, I look at almost, you know, I look at all of them. I've told them that this week, like my son, like my sons. And, uh, and I, every once in a while, I look over to Blake, but I said, does that mean I'm not hard on you? No. You know, that, that, the reason I do is because I care. When I stop caring is when I don't talk to you. Okay, and that's just part of those type of things. And I care about Jamie because you guys don't get a chance to see behind the scenes all the other little bitty things he does from a confidence, from a attitude, from an awareness. His awareness is out there now. I mean, some of the best I've ever been around. Some Sean Taylor type awareness. You know, and I've told you that's the best player I've ever coached. So I worry about him. So now I'm going to turn him into a coach and uh, get him to uh, help as much as he can around here once, you know, his knee settles down. Generally speaking, uh, how strong is the nucleus that is forming on your defense uh, that can be applied that to win the games will theoretically be more meaningful next year? Say it again. How strong is the nucleus? Oh, the how strong. Up? I just didn't hear the word how. Um, uh, defensively strong. Strong. And I like these guys. Now, it's my job to continue to play to their strengths. And that's still a learning process. I, there's not very much anymore now that I don't really have a good feel for or understand who they are. Um, that doesn't mean that in a ball game there's not a pitch, a play or two that I'd like to have back in a call structure to help them. I, I've got a pretty good feel for reading people's mind after all these years on, and that's an, an expression on a feel for what they're getting ready to do on the other side of the ball. And so for the most part, even some of those plays that were um, hit the other day, you know, the feel was there and our players understood the call, you know, wow, we got this. And then if somebody does something, they didn't have the right feel, didn't have the right techniques. And those are things, the longer you're around each other, the more you understand. And this week I've gone back to training camp. And if you want to ask any of the guys, you know, that's a little bit harder, firmer, um, less chit-chat back and forth. It's my way or the highway type things. And they have responded very well. And when youth is no excuse, and that's what I've told them, I don't want to hear one word from anybody. You're old enough to be here. You're old enough to do it. And the longer you play with each other, the better it'll get. But the nucleus is there from, from my standpoint. And I came here because of that. And I think I told you guys this in the opening thing back a long time ago, is that there's three reasons why I came here. One was the head coach. I didn't know him personally, but I respected competition against him. Two was I liked a lot of these players on defense. I had on my list other places to want to coach them. And three was is that people said I couldn't help. And sometimes I need self-motivation too from a chip on my shoulder. I like what we got. We got to continue to go and we got to continue to grow. Is there no 
familiar to you that uh, you know the young guys will be a year older next year and your system uh, you know if it works out that this uh, this staff and everybody is back your system will be in a second year that everything and, and the additions you might make in the draft and free agency that everything it's a no-brainer that everything should conspire that uh, there will be a big step. I think it'll be every time you yeah those things and so you know from a system the system is a word of communication and there's nobody <laughs> in the National Football League's history that has morphed what you all perceive to be systems. I change that every week. I change that every day. I change it within the ball game when injuries occur in the ball game. For instance, Jamie can do some things that James Burgess can't. But you'll see a couple other people in those spots this week too that you're going to say, hmm, that wasn't bad. That on how they're going to go do some things. So, from a system standpoint, the verbiage will be, you know, understandable. We're, we're we're speaking the same language, but regardless of what the talent level is, we'll have a philosophy of playing those guys right. Now, the one thing I'm not going to compromise on is your toughness and your effort. I'm not. I'm just not going to do that. You know, that's not going to. And you pick another sport or. Make sure you have your college major. The, uh, more? the five minutes when you had Garrett Ogba and Collins, for, you know, Garrett finally fully healthy and all that together, you had all set peppers on the field as another first round pick. Is that kind of the vision you had of this? Yeah, it's a, it's a great vision. And, you know, with those names you mentioned, and I, I really don't think enough is being said about how far and how well Emmanuel's doing. I, and I'm serious about it. I mean, he's – and it's no knock about what was what was asked of him last year, but the guy's a defensive end. He's not an outside linebacker, you know. Put his hand in the ground, let him go. And I think he'll be better and better and better. I, I, don't, I don't think he's even come close to being as good as he could be yet. And you're seeing less – robotic thinking, and I'm not saying that in a negative way, but his confidence in knowing what to do and his confidence in knowing that I have his back and letting him do has been very good. And I think he's going to continue to grow. And there's some other guys that you, you didn't mention that are in there that I really like coaching, I really do. Okay, And there's nobody, there's nobody in that room I don't like coaching, not one person that, that I don't like. Not one. Now, what our business is about is forming competition to have those guys compete. And if somebody is competing that's better than that, that's what our business is about, is competition. And you can't have too much of that. You, you can never, ever, ever have too many good players in the building. And you know, here's another good sign for you guys. When you know we're doing it right here, in, in this way is when people we cut are on other teams. Now we've got, wow, the competition is pretty good. But my reputation in the league has been, ugh, he didn't want him, why would I want him? Because they know about how I, I like I, undrafted guys. Who, it doesn't make any difference. If you're a tough son of a gun and give us your all, we're, we're going to enjoy coaching you and, and enjoy playing. How well um, Emmanuel and Miles kind of complement each other and what that does for a defense when you have – I know they're not playing together all the time. But it affects what the opponent thinks, meaning that all of a sudden because of their – both of their effectiveness playing together at the same time, you know, which one – and how you're going to set the protection, which one you're going to leave on an island. You know, one of the things we do schematically is, is that when it becomes more than a four-man rush, I get to help them become more one-on-ones for those guys. I don't just pressure to affect the coverage. I also pressure to affect the rush. Otherwise, there's two guys that are going to get doubled at all times in a four-man rush if it's six-man protection. Okay, and so we do those type of things, and it's been fun to see those guys be out there. And there's been a little bit different strategy, you know, from 
the other side of the ball. And because of my offensive awareness and being an offensive coordinator and a quarterback, and you know, I think that helps me be a, a defensive coach. That I see the games that are being playing during, you know, and I, I think you guys see. I don't ever look at that thing. I just hide my mouth so you can't tell, see when I'm saying a bad word. I'm just kidding, okay? But you know, it's just part of the feel of the game. And when those guys are out there. Um, there's been some interesting thoughts on where people are going to take the protection to. Why is the run defense? Why were you able to make such a big jump from last year to this year? Well, I don't want to give away all my secrets, so everybody's going to start doing it. But uh, you know, there's there's some techniques that we do differently here that really, uh, unless you're in my coaching family, it doesn't happen. It's kind of foreign, and then. Uh, Good guys, good guys. Took out, took out the uh, doubt on how to play gap control. Let them be tough, and uh, and then be very, very, very hard on every blade of grass from the time we started in April in every meeting. And they took, you know, they've taken great pride with it. We have good ability, physical, I'm talking about powerful ability in the entire, in the whole front is that way. I don't think Miles gets enough credit for how powerful he is, nor does Nate, Orchard, Emmanuel, Carl. They've got power in their body now. And then now they just want, coach, tell me how you want me to use it. And I have no problems telling them exactly and take the gray out of how to use it. And in the previous regime, that's a really good, you know, re, you know, background of coaching too. But their philosophy was a lot of two gap, where you had two gaps instead of mm, I don't believe in that, and we're not going to do it that way. And our players have been have been able to use sometimes lesser players to handle one gap, as opposed to you better be really, really, really good to handle two gaps all the way across the board. And those those becomes problems and that's you know, coaching too.